Mark 16, praise the Lord. If you will stand with us after you've turned to the book of the Gospel of St. Mark 16. Mark 16, when you found it, say amen, please. Some still are looking, so we'll give a couple of seconds for everybody. All right, Mark 16, we're going to begin. We want to read responsibly, and we're going to read down all the way through verse 14, beginning at verse 1. Let me see, did I get my Joseph? I don't think I brought my glasses. I, they are in my briefcase. All right, I'm going to start here. Verse uh, 1, <clears throat> and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. For it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were frightened. And he saith unto them, Be not afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him, as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the residue. Neither believed they them. Afterward, and afterward he, he appeared, appeared unto, unto the, the eleven, eleven as, as they, they sat and ate and, and upbraided, upbraided them with, with their, their unbelief, unbelief and hardness of heart, because, because they, they believed believe not them which had seen him after, after he was, was risen. risen. Praise the Lord. Pray with us. <clears throat> Our Father which art in heaven, we thank you for this Sunday that's set aside as Resurrection Sunday. Father, we are grateful to you for each and every one that came today. And I pray that your presence your Holy Spirit will minister to us individually. You know our needs. You are faithful to minister to our needs. So we are grateful to just to be in your presence. Thank you so much for tabernacling with us this day, Holy Father. It is your presence that goes with us, Lord, that enables us, God, at every junction, we thank you and give your name to glory. Open the word, Lord God. Make it simple, but make it clear. Let someone, as they hear the simple truth of your word, receive an opening or revelation from God that it may further anchor the soul. I pray this prayer, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. You know, it's pretty, uh, I guess, traditional to talk about the Resurrection Sunday on these times, although when it's aired, uh, we're talking the next couple of Sundays. But, um, and I thought to share on something else, but um, anyway, I, uh, in keeping with uh, that which is traditional, we, we, we Bring your attention to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
As I read through these um, verses, I, I'm always asking the Lord what, what can we see that we can apply to our lives concerning God or concerning his son. And uh, we, so we thank God. Thank God. Give everybody a chance to be seated while I'm talking. But uh, So uh, as I was looking into the word of God, there are two or three things that just very simple, clear, um, but they are truths to live by, which we believe, and uh, try and practice. And I'll just point them out briefly um, <clears throat> and hopefully we can take something with us today. Um, this portion, this chapter 16, talks about uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, first it talks about the resurrection, then it talks about his appearance to different ones. And then after he appeared to many, and uh, one account says he appeared to over 500 brethren at once. So there's a lot of people that had an opportunity to see and know that Jesus was no longer dead and in the grave, right? That 500 had an opportunity to tell all their friends and relatives that this Jesus that walked the shores of Galilee, this Jesus that proclaimed the truth, he rose from the dead, just like he said. So now, if you can imagine those 500 telling another 500 or 1,000 and traditionally continued to repeat itself. It was very important to God and it's important to us. Somehow or another, we got the truth. Thousands of years later, we got the truth that Jesus rose from the dead. It was that important to God the message of it, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ be perpetuated in the minds and hearts and the voices of those that know the truth. So it talked about his resurrection, it talked about his appearance, and then finally it talked about his commissioning, his followers. There is a responsibility that comes along with knowledge and understanding, right? And so once we receive the knowledge that God is risen from the dead, then God requires something of us that we'll tell somebody, right? Because there are a lot of people that do not know that Jesus rose from the dead. Three things that I want to share with you that uh, you can find them. And all you have to do is just read it through it time or two and it stands right out. Number one. This is what the Lord made me see, and, and I hope it'll help you too. God, number one, God, ex, don't expect everybody to believe your report. I think we can get along well when we have that understanding, that basic knowledge. Just because we have the truth, we know it's true. We walk in it, we do our best to walk in it, right? We try and tell others, right? But what he pointed out to me, I said, God, what can we learn and take with us? He said, don't, ex don't expect everybody to believe your report. Now, that sounds negative, but it can be helpful. So then he began to help me. to. I just kind of went back through the scriptures, and, uh, and then he kind of took me to Noah, how Noah preached for a hundred and 20 years. It's hard for us to grasp that, right? And the only one got converted was his household. And then he further went and told me about Jeremiah, reminded me of Jeremiah. How many know about Jeremiah? Jeremiah the prophet ministered for a number of years and yet not one convert. So I'm happy when I see all the people here. Because it didn't have to be that way, isn't that right? 
It was not an indication of my call. It was not an indication of the validity of my call just because, uh, uh, or hits Jeremiah's call because no, there were no converts. God says, I formed you before or while you were in the womb. So Jeremiah had to be assured in his heart that God called me and the results are left unto him. Isn't that right? Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. That was particularly interesting to me as, uh, um, you know, God, if, if you had asked God for a truth in that, he might would have revealed something else to you. That might would have been another need that you had, right? But obviously that must have been a need that I needed, I had. Don't be discouraged, but be encouraged to know that you're called and you must continue in the call. God looks for faithfulness. Isn't that right? God looks for faithfulness. This is the requirement that he had. Paul said, he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. So God not only talked to me about Paul and Noah, Jeremiah. Isaiah said, who has believed our report? Isn't that right? Moses, he preached, and out of his first years in the wilderness, a whole generation was wiped out because of unbelief. Sometime in this modern society, we get a glimpse of big churches and we get the wrong idea. We tend to think that this is the way God is and that's what he wants for us. So we struggle when we don't see it. But I'm here to tell you that God began to help me to see, look at the scriptures, that's your pattern. That's what you should look at, not as what's going on in society today. Because when, the, when uh, uh, at the end of the day, what I'm going to require of you is faithfulness. Somebody says, Selah. So, let's not expect everybody to believe our reports. Let's do it in faith. Do it with a glad heart. Isn't that right? Praise the Lord. Those ministers that are watching me by TV, I hope this will encourage you to know that you could have a big flock or you could not. But what's important to God is that you remain faithful. When God, when you stand before God, says you were faithful over a few things. That's the, that's the thing that God wants us to understand. And not only did he take me to these uh, Noah, Jeremiah, and Isaiah, Moses, Jesus said, if they have kept my saying, they'll keep yours. Isn't that what he said? We have some scholars in here, Bible scholars, isn't that right? <laughs> Come on, Jesus, you know, look at Jesus. He's a good God. He, he was telling his disciples from, before he commissioned them, remember this. You're not greater than the Lord. If they call, if they call Jesus Beelzebub, they may call you a devil sometime. I know they don't sound good, but what I'm trying to share with you is this. We must be faithful to what God assigns us to do. Isn't that right? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So he said, don't expect everybody to believe your report. Then he went on and took me uh, to another, to Paul. When Paul was in a desperate strait, he began to say, when he was in a jail, cold, Paul said, when he sent to Timothy to bring the parchments, he said, all that are in Asia have turned away from me. I pray God it does not be charged to them. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? I hope pastors everywhere will be encouraged today to know that, 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 that God is faithful. That's, 
He's the faithful one. And since he's faithful, he put faithfulness in our spirit that we will go on when the going gets tough, when it gets rough. We understand that the bottom line is the results are left to God. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. We don't want to get caught up in the game of, I remember when I started out years ago, we had this brother meant well. He'd turn around every time we'd have a conference. How many of you running? And he would frustrate some of the pastors because they weren't running too many. <laughs> Amen. But God is good. So, he, so uh, Paul said, all that in Asia have turned away from me. And then there was a time in Jesus' life after he preached the Bible says, neither did his family or his brethren believe in him. Anybody listening to me today? God. This is the real world, isn't that right? Sometimes we look at everything out but what the word says. The Lord shows us in his word some of the truest prophets in the world were persecuted and frustrated and they didn't get the people converted, but they preached the truth. Isn't that right? Sometimes we look at church, we get mad at people when they don't do right, but that's God's problem. That's God's concern. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? We must be faithful to declare the word of God. The Bible says he's able to make his servants stand. Isn't that right? Isn't that good news? The results that's left to God is not left to us. It's not on our shoulders. Praise God. We do it and we care. We do it with love. But we must not get burned down with the task of trying to do God's part. Isn't that right? The second thing is he showed me is God truly wants people to know the resurrection of his son. He truly, truly wants to Enable us to communicate that truth. Not uh, uh, the first part. I didn't. I didn't. I, I want to go back and in in what I said. Don't look for everybody to believe. Look what he said in verse um, uh, nine. Now, when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, right, out of whom he had cast seven devils, and she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. Now they were weeping for Jesus, right? Because he had the, the, at the, law, the death of Christ. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, they what? They, believe they didn't believe. Now they're praying, they're crying and weeping, right? Look at verse 12. After that he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked. You know, the disciples on the road to Emmaus. And, he, and went into the country and they went and told it to the residue, neither believe they them, right? They didn't believe their report because they went and told them, well, you know, they, did that heart burn when, on the way when he was talking to us? And yet, they didn't believe. And then the 14 says, after what he appeared to the 11, as they sat at meeting and upbraiding them with their unbelieving hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Lord have mercy. Wow, these people were eyewitnesses of the majesty of God and the people that told them were people, many of them were quite familiar and they knew. It's like if my wife saw, uh, had a vision of God and she began to tell me something God said, and I said, I don't believe it. It was her vision that she saw of him, right? And so if you, you, these people, this is the same thing that happened and they didn't believe. So I want you to look at somebody because... We have an opportunity to share Christ. Don't expect everybody to believe your report. Just look at somebody next to you and say, don't believe everybody. Don't believe. Don't expect everybody to believe your report. Don't be discouraged about it, right? But just understand that everybody's not going to believe. Then number two, God truly wants people to know of the resurrection of his son. Now I'm going to go back in verse 3. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? This was Mary, Magdalene, and Mary, and Salome. 
And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away because it was a great, it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were frightened. And he said to them, be not frightened. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He's risen. He's not here. See, behold the place where they laid him. Go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said to you. Now, obviously, that which he had on his head and the, the garments, it was, it, someone said it was like something slips out of this body. With the headband and all the, how he was wrapped from head to toe. It was like somebody just slipped right out of that. So he says, see, go see where he laid. The clothes were in that manner. They weren't ripped off of him. Are y'all with me? And so the angel told him, he's not here. Don't seek the living among the dead. He's not here. He's alive. He's risen like he said. So, and, and, and as he was pointing that out to me, God really wants people to know the resurrection of his son. This is what's important. Our neighbors, our friends, God wants them to know that his son rose from the dead. He really needs our support. Are you with me? Now think about it. We come every Sunday. We worship. We praise the Lord. We get excited, right? But how many times do we, through the week, fail to just open our mouths and say something about the resurrected Christ. You know what I said, and we were coming on, and uh, I said, you know what I would love for God to do? I would love to see God's people stain these altars with tears of repentance. Tears of true repentance that when we get up from that altar, we're changed. When we walk out that door, we're not like the people that we came in here about. The Bible says we're strangers and sojourners, pilgrims. This world is not our home. We believe that Christ rose from the dead. Think about it. Do we really believe he rose from the dead? How much do you believe it? Will you tell somebody this week? Will you tell them? When nobody is looking, will you tell somebody? When there's no flowers patting you or no, no accolades patting you on the back, will you tell somebody that Jesus rose from the dead? Will you? It's a thought question. We are serving him. Isn't that right? So God wants people to know. I believe we'll see revival. I believe we'll see revival when one, we truly let God change us. And when we leave these doors that we be so on fire for God, we will share this good news of God. And I'll tell you, you'll have a joy that you cannot get in any other way. When you are delivering the word of God concerning Jesus' son, this is where the joy will come and fill our souls and, and all these things that entraps us. They no longer will entrap us, brothers and sisters, uh, we have been called to such an hour. I often hear him say, you could have been called a long time ago. You could have been a part of the, early, of the Old Testament saints when, when or, or the people or when God first created heaven and earth. You could have been a part of a wrong lineage or, or the, the seed of Cain. You could have been there. You could have been a part of those that were washed away in the flood, but God didn't see fit that that would happen to us. You could have been a part of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
You could have been a part of the Old Testament prophets. You could have lived in that time when, when there was legalism and condemnation. You could have been among that crew there that people feared for their lives trying to serve the Lord all the time. But God didn't see fit. He saved us for the very last. And when the finale is the time, hallelujah, when the Lord is soon to come, I believe that God saved us for the last for a purpose. Of, and I heard uh, 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 um, Mordecai tell Esther, uh, Queen Esther, when she feared to go into the, ki to the king, uh, and she was concerned about her own selfish life. Uh, but then he said, if you would all together hold your peace at this time, then shall a large enlargement arise from another place. Uh, you and your household will be desolate. But he said, who knows that whether or not you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I want to stir up your pure mind. This is not a time to play church. This is not a time to glory on Sunday morning alone. This is not a time. This is a time for changes, brothers and sisters. This is a time when the Spirit of God is calling out for repentance. This is a time when the Spirit of God is crying out, saying, get rid of the malice, get rid of the envy and jealousy, get rid of the unforgiveness and anger. This is a time when the Spirit of God is crying out to his church, and he said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. This is a time when the Spirit of God is crying out for repentance. This is a time when the Spirit of God is doing restoration. This is the time when God alone wants to take sinner stage. This is a time when God is crying out. He said, return to your first love. Yeah. Hallelujah. When we first started out, no one had to Push our arm to witness. No one had to do that to us. Just the mention of his name. If you were in the restaurant anywhere and you heard somebody talking about Jesus when you first got saved. You would so your ears would itch. You want to just be in on it. You want to witness to them and let them know, yeah, I found this Jesus. Um, but something has happened, brother, sister. Something has taken place in our lives. Uh, look like maybe we've gone through too many challenges. Um, we've gone through the wilderness experience. Um, but God is bringing us out of this. And God has said, I'm bringing you out. Um, I'm going to set you on high. But I want you to understand my heartbeat. I desire truth in the inward parts. Um, I desire that my people walk with me. I desire that my people, which are called by my name, should humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways so I can hear from heaven. I will save. I will deliver. I will draw people. If I could get my people to bow down and pray, call upon the Lord while he's near. Call upon him while he's near. Seek his face while he may be found. These old truths, they don't go anywhere. They are real. They are real. And I believe that if God could be satisfied today, All of us could come before the fountain of living waters, rend our hearts and not our garments. Oh, my God, if, if we could, like David said, he said, you desire truth in the inward parts. Oh, do you love him today? Do you love him today? Do you, do you really love him today? Oh, God may have an assignment for you. But do you love him today? Are you willing today to allow him to use you in the way that he desires? Souls are dying. He did rise from the dead. He is risen from the dead. And I was thinking about the things that God did. I remember when the Bible talks about Israel was in a certain state. 
And then there was uh, Lehab and the Syrian that had leprosy. And they had one of the little ladies from Israel working there as a maid. And then she heard that Naaman had, had leprosy. And, and he, he, there was no cure as far as he was concerned. But she overheard him and she says, I would to God. I would to God he was back in Israel. He would know that there's a prophet in Israel. In other words, God would recover him from that leprosy. Would to God, like the woman cried out. I know that some of your hearts are crying out the same way. Would to God um, that we'd see the move of God um, like we see it in the old in the New Testament. Isn't that right? Um, would to God we see it. And God, God is God is faithful. He says, I, I'm still, I'm still willing to move. But this is the thing that sometimes separates us from God's move. I know that people don't want to hear that. But old sin does that, separates us from God. Yes. If I confess my sins, yes. God is faithful to forgive me yes. of my sins and to cleanse me yes. from all all unrighteousness. Well, what is the problem if God is willing to do that? What is the problem? Oh, saints of God, he wants his people to know of the resurrection of his son. He appeared many times to different ones. And then he, the Bible records that there was a heavenly messenger, an angel from God, Turn around and told the ladies first, and they first preached the, preached the gospel. Isn't that right? Yes. They were the first one that came, and they preached that Christ had risen from the dead. Oh, but he didn't leave it to just a few of them. He, he appeared to, the, to his own apostles where he told them that I'm going to rise again the third day. And then when they went and told Peter and the others they were fishing and carrying on, they didn't believe him. But this is a day and this is an hour where the Lord is calling us to believe now so that we can see the salvation of the Lord. There's a harvest to be brought in now. There's a harvest and God wants to bring this harvest in. But before he brings that harvest in, you and I know that God is getting us right so that we will not be an offense to the harvest that comes in because lives are broken, lives are hurting and bruised. Isn't that right? So it's like God is calling us now to repentance. He truly wants us to know uh, people that know about this resurrection power. And there are people crying out in their homes. Saying God. If you're real. God if you're really real. All over the world they're crying out. God if you're really real. If you're really real. I'm in a desperate strait. I need to know that you're real. And God is looking for somebody. Like he sent Ananias. He said go there. There's a man called Saul of Tarsus. Go there. I want you to lay hands on him. And when you lay your hands on him, I'm going to open the eyes of his blindness. I'm going to cause him to see. And Ananias wasn't a prophet. And Ananias wasn't an apostle. Isn't that right? He was just a saint. God is looking for saints. That are willing. Isn't that right? So God said we can learn to know the heartbeat of God. He truly wants people to know of the resurrection of his son. The third thing he said, we can know through the scriptures the certainty of God's word of promise. He says here in the word of God, Mark, the angel said this. Verse 6. Be not affrighted. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He's risen. He's not here. Go see the place where he lay, where they laid him. Another account said he's risen as he said. Has he said? Has God said? Now, here's the thing here. Now, now the Lord shared with me while I was sitting there. If you're, that there's some people that he's going to completely free you up today and there's coming a restoration of your 
fellowship with God. I just believe it, just like he said. So God, he says, when God promised something, he's going to do it. God made promises to all of us, right? I believe every one of us have some word of truth or prophecy that God spoke to us that he was going to do, right? Some years ago. Time seemed to challenge those things. Isn't that right? But God's not challenged by that, right? One day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as. God's not slight concerning his promise. But he's long suffering. God speaks what he says. And I'm going to make this short here. God rose from the dead. He is not in that grave. And he is not hanging on the cross. The Bible declares there's an empty tomb that validates the fact that Jesus Christ is no longer there. The angel was there to let them know this. No, it wasn't what the soldiers, like what the soldiers said. They nobody stole his body. Look at the clothes. See the condition of the clothes. The headband, nobody took it loose. So nobody, just, it's like something slipped right out of that. See the place where he lay. Look at the imprint. God God wrote, raised Jesus Christ from the dead. So he's alive. And he began to show himself to so many people. Now, why would he do that? He wants the world, the heathen world. He wants people to know that Jesus Christ is coming. There's a lot of religions, as you well know, right? But as we heard earlier, there's none can do the job. We've got the real thing. We've got the real thing. Isn't that right? Now, I want to challenge you this year, before we, in, in conclusion, there are those that God is going to resurrect and revive your spirit because he said he was, because he said he would do it. It's not in mortal man, it's in God, right? So, if you're here, we're getting ready to conclude simply. If you're here today, and you've been in a dry place. I mean a dry place. You, you cannot put your eyes on it's this brother or this sister's fault. It's nobody's fault but yours. Are you with me? That's the first thing. Now we have to admit it's nobody's fault but mine. Isn't that right? I have a right to the access of the throne. Nobody kept me from coming before the throne of God. Isn't that right? Nobody barred you from the, the house of God. Nobody barred you from, from heaven's court. Nobody kept you from opening the scriptures. That was your doing. Isn't that right? So now, what are you saying, Brother Herring? I'm saying that the Lord is going to restore now out of his wonderful mercy and his grace some soul is going to be ministered to by his power and, 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 and because God cares for us and because we talked about this resurrection power, isn't that right? God is faithful. So I want you to begin to join me so that our spirits can be unified in this place. Are you with me? So that our spirits can be unified in this place. Are you with me? We're not unified right now. We're not unified, but I want our spirits to be unified. So join me and begin to thank and praise God, first of all. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise that our spirits will become on, become, will come on one accord with what you are, are, are planning and purposing to do in this place now. You are alive, O oh God, and we, we as your people, Lord God, we, we want to be instruments in your hand when we leave this place. We want to, we want to be yielded and obedient to you, Lord, because this pleases you, Lord. We want, we want to be what you want us to be, Lord God. We want, we want to hear when you, we stand before you, well done, good and faithful servant. So there's some of us now, Lord God, that are ready to receive that touch from God so that they'll leave a different way. Some have been having a really difficult time in your families. 
some hearts are just plain burdened. Some, some, some just don't know how now that they can to get this, this, this well flowing again. But I want you to know that God's going to meet you today. Because he desires. I'm not saying he's going to meet everybody. But everybody don't believe, right? But he's going to meet somebody. Because that's his mind. That's his plan. That's his purpose. Pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you now, Lord, the, the, for the powers that come to interfere with what you are planning to do. We, we are joining in forces with God and coming in full agreement now to bind up and to break, to forbid and cancel every assignment from the enemy now. And the authority of Jesus' name, we refute his lies, we refute his evil hand in the name of Jesus and command him to cease, desist, get out, go, leave in the name of Jesus you're not welcome. Now go, I said, go. The blood is against you. Leave. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. God, I ask that you would breathe a freshness upon your people now, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, let, it, let our, our thoughts become regulated. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, um, and consistent, oh Lord, with what you're saying, what you want to do, Lord God. First, first, there's a call to repentance. Lord, we really haven't obeyed you. We really haven't obeyed you like we should. We can think of so many things you told us to do. and Lord, we didn't do it. And so we, we want to acknowledge that first and foremost. And then we want you to cleanse, forgive and cleanse our hearts. Oh God. So that it can shut the door to the things that the enemy has been hindering us these many years. Change us, Father, by your spirit. Let a cleansing come. Let a healing come over the spirits of your people, Lord. Then let joy fill the house again. Because the fragrance... of your spirit and our hearts crying out to God. I thank you, Master. I give you praise. Touch the ones now that you are ready to touch and minister healing. In Jesus' name. I would like for us to stand, and I want to ask this. First and foremost, I want you to know if you if you, your heart agree with what the Lord is saying, if you're one of those that really you feel that real need for just a, a cleansing and a, a breakthrough in your spirit, man, and worship. If you, if you say, the Lord, that, 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 I know that's me. I really need that. Maybe one or two, maybe three or four, I don't know. But if you are one of those, I want you to come. Just, just, no form, no fashion, just come.